All right, gonna be the last of my Palomars. Well, I might do one more with a uh, tram driving it instead of uh, my little Motorola. But anyway, Blackface Palomar 300A, pretty much the same as the uh, Whiteface 300A. Very little differences that make any uh, any real difference. Um, Blackface are older, Whiteface is a newer style, and. If you looked at the other video, if you see here, it's actually the, except for this board here, this is that dual one I was talking about where um, that top half is for the um, drivers, I think, and the bottom half is for the, um, for the finals. That's the bias board. And quickly over here, again, power supply board has the two big caps and diodes and bleeders there. For the high voltage, that's a voltage doubler, and every one I've seen has been a voltage doubler like this. I haven't seen any that um, were the high voltage bridge version, and also that's the uh, that's actually a little diode there and uh, cap for the low voltage that you know runs the lights and the preamp and uh, the uh, relays. This one has the high voltage relay that um, only fires up the high voltage when the um, amp is keyed up. Other than that the um, the um, high voltage is not applied to the high voltage board. It comes out the transformer and one of the legs go to that uh, relay first and then into the high voltage board so the high voltage isn't even active until it's keyed up and I think I went through this before on one that uh, this one also has the standby switch for the high voltage also it's not applied with the um when the standby switch is on standby so it's got one of the legs going through the um standby switch too which is redundant to me makes no sense but um i'm no engineer i mean if you got that relay and it only uh, uh high voltage is only active when you key down the relay uh, what sense do it make to run it through the standby switch too but anyway on most of versions maybe they figured it out I don't know because um, most of them they do not have the high voltage going through the standby switch it's a normal 2 pin switch like that one that's the power switch but on the later ones it's got a 2 pin and it, and it doesn't have that 4 pin there with a high voltage going through it but anyway I wasn't going to be long winded on this one I just wanted to fire up a, a Blackface 300A um, Gonna turn it down and I guess people like to see pictures of the insides. Call that amp porn with the skirt up or off. Um, this one's the 10 meter one or 10 11 meters where all the other band coils and switches and all that have been taken out and actually the um, can I get it there? There you go. The um, band switch is just a screw, you know, hooked to the uh, knob in the front. There is no band switch. That does not turn at all. And it's just got uh, the one coil. And, you know, that's where it was, you know, bypassed that on that end. And all that other 15 to 40 meter and the stuff has been taken out and gone. And even on the driver, all that... Uh, handband stuff has been taken out and gone on this one um, the fan wasn't working or wasn't working well so um, put in a muffin fan so this one got more airflow than that old uh, I don't even know what type of fan that open frame fan, fan that they normally come up with and one of the little tidbit I found is you see the um, caps or the end of these tubes and see how wide they are compared to that one uh, this one and it all looks factory too the two driver tubes have the smaller high voltage uh, uh, caps here and the final tubes have the larger ones here and I do believe these were six LF6s and I had a set of six so I was gonna put some six LF6s in there 
and they don't fit with the smaller um, high voltage caps on there or so um, what I found was the um, 6KD6 I think it was tubes which is the same family basically the same tube and maybe that's the difference between a 6LF6 and 6KD6 they have the smaller um, caps at the top where the 6LF6 always had the big one um, one other thing I found that if you see the bottom of those 6KD6's is big at the bottom so that tube will fit either the small one there or the big one and the big one of course will not fit the small one so I thought that was kind of interesting um, everything else is kind of straightforward you know driver driver tune cap um, final tune pi coil pi load cap um, that's the preamp and uh, key in circuit low voltage stuff and that's pretty much it for this amplifier grounded grid so we're gonna fire up right quick let it warm up a second and while I'm thinking about it I always ground my amps before I play with them um, trying not to get shocked by these things I know you don't supposed to run them with the top open but uh hey trying to be careful make these videos and then I cover it up and everything else when I play with it on my own and not making a video um oh one more thing while it's warming up while I'm thinking about it it's probably easier to see it from the up underside but I'm not gonna mess with it now that I got it on but this amp has a lot of uh, screws like that one that one it's um Ford is holding down see those little screws and it's got nuts on the bottom of them some of them have spacers uh, that one got the nut on that end the little ground cable there it's got a bunch of them even the ones that uh, hold the uh, tune and load if you take off that knob you can almost see it there there's a couple uh, screws that hold these down and what I found on all of them because these things yeah, again about 50 years old 1970s here is that I guess over time those screws and nuts get loose and that's basically your grounds uh, for these amplifiers I know Demco is the same thing you can see a couple other nuts well one there is one behind the two but uh, those screws and nuts um, are the grounds for a lot of the boards it's the grounds that hold the um, the, the uh, tune and load cap so when those screws get loose basically you're gonna start getting hiccups and and, and problems and all that and uh, basically all it is is a screw loose so I reckon that man anybody get one to you know unplug it wait for it to discharge it's got good bleeders in it and and then uh, tighten all your screws and nuts including the ones behind the uh, tune and load cap there take your um, knob off and tighten up all your screws and nuts that'll help this amp out a lot and that mean go through all of them of course the solder joints too is a known problem especially with the tubes being on a circuit board so uh, redo all your solder joints on the circuit boards it's not that many and then uh, I got a little dust thing flying around like I said I got that better fan in it it's got a uh, lot more air than a normal one and uh, but anyway tighten up your screws and nuts that that'll help you out a lot and and redo them solder joints on this on these things you know 50 year old stuff needs maintenance and recap them uh, that's basically what I did to these and uh, guess we're gonna fire it up now we're on uh, average. No, we're on peak. Dead can 200. Hello, hello. Audio. Talking to five, maybe a little over five. Audio. Audio. And again, I forgot I got this stupid watt meter in between. I don't have to uh, unkey it to show you what's going into it. This watt meter is in between the amp and the uh, radio. It's on the input side, so that 2.3 on the left, when I shut my mouth, 
that's 2.5 now that's the dead key going into the amp and then the input SWR on this one is a 1.1 isn't that nice one other thing I found when I was playing with this one is when you adjust the driver I had a, a little bit of a time getting that tuned up right but when I finally got it right my input SWR went haywire again I'm like how did that happen and what it is they interact with each other you know you tune the driver the input the SWR you know you need to retune it a little bit and same with the uh, uh, the finals you know once you get them tuned up you might have to go back and touch up the um, the uh, driver tune so they all interact with each other a little bit but that's what I'm putting in about two and a half watts dead key audio 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 talking about five and three quarter barely hitting six on a whistle so I'm not hitting it hard this little Palomar and still got it keyed down no hiccups no nothing because again you go through it right and uh, tighten everything up put some new caps on it got the fan blowing good things aren't overheating everything there nice and smooth this is kind of the way I like to run amps even a little bit less dead key but um, that radio doesn't have a dollar watt in it or else I you know if I was gonna use it I would dial it down a little bit more and let it swing so you know study at 250 talking over about 550 now heating up nicely I'm gonna put it on average Damn. Kids getting no audio. Audio. A little over 200. Audio. Talking to almost three. And this is calibrated to a bird on average. Audio. 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 So I guess that's going to be it for this uh, smooth running. Preamp works. Everything works on it. Not the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but uh, you know, it's been gone through, recapped, and. Uh, Another smooth talker. Like that input SWR too. Alright, is it? Bye.